Adobe Character Animator lets you record a live performance to animate your characters, instead of traditional keyframes. Unless you're a professional actor, getting everything perfect on your first take, like head movement, pupil and eyebrow position, voice, arms, and everything else, can feel daunting. Luckily, there are plenty of tools to edit and build on your performances, allowing you several ways to fix any mistake or fine-tune a particular detail. When you have a puppet selected in a scene timeline, you should notice some behaviors and red dots appearing on the right side. A red dot just means this behavior is armed for recording, so as soon as you click the big red record button, any behaviors with red dots are going to look for new information to come in. Clicking any red dot disarms it, so this gives you a way to slowly build up a performance by recording each piece individually. Arm the face behavior, and you can just record your face, without worrying about anything else. Arm the lip sync behavior, record your voice. Arm the dragger behavior, record a hand waving. As you record, you'll see these start to build up in your timeline as takes. Just click the arrow next to any behavior to twirl it down. The top projection bar for any behavior just lets you move or trim all your takes together at once. You can record as many takes as you want. So let's say I recorded this character looking down, but wanted him to look up at a certain point. With just my face behavior armed, I'll start a new take just a little bit before the part I want to record over. Once I'm done recording, notice that the second take appears as a bar above the first one, and in Character Animator, whatever take is on top is the one you'll see. Anything not used for the visible animation is grayed out. But we've got a problem. The transition between takes is really choppy. To fix this, I could use take blending by dragging in the little squares at the edges of the second take. Now when I play the scene back, take 2 starts coming in when the blend curve starts ramping up, and bows out again when the curve falls. To make this whole motion quicker, I could drag over the clip edges to trim it to a shorter duration, and then make the curve steeper on each end. You can also press Command-B on Mac or Control-B on Windows to cycle between different default blend in and out states. Not every behavior is blendable, so look for the little squares to see if blending is possible. After a while, my timelines end up looking a lot like this. Several underlying main takes with a bunch of smaller blended takes above. I'm constantly watching my performance back and finding small parts to fix or enhance. If a behavior's armed for recording dot is dim, even if it's red, it means it won't record a take, because if you twirl it down, you'll notice nothing is armed inside the behavior. You can safely ignore these unless you want one of the values to change during the performance. So transform is usually dimmed, but if I armed position X and drag the value during recording, my character would change its X position. The mouth is also a critical part of a convincing performance. Character Animator automatically tries to match the right mouth to the voice by either whatever you're saying into your microphone in real time, or dragging in an external talk track and going to Timeline Compute Lip Sync from Scene Audio. A new feature is Timeline Split Lip Sync into Visims, which will split a selected lip sync track into individual mouth shapes. Now you have frame by frame precision to trim or move mouth shapes, ensuring things will always line up perfectly. Before doing this, I'll usually isolate the section I need to edit by splitting the lip sync take on either end. Otherwise, you might be digging through hundreds of mouth shapes. You can even manually add new mouth shapes by switching the lip sync recording input from audio to keyboard. Now if you press the first letter from one of the character's 10 possible mouth shapes, you'll see that shape appear. For more fluid animation, try enabling slow motion recording by changing the value next to the record button. If I set the value to half speed, I'll hear any audio playback slower, giving me more time to react to key moments and get my timing just right. When I play my scene back at normal speed, everything will seem a little faster. I'll typically record at 3 quarters speed or lower for any dragger animations like the hands because it lets me nail specific gestures at specific times and make my arm motions look smooth and quick. To test out or edit some of the puppets you've seen here, as well as a project with several take blending examples, check out the free download in the video description below. Good luck and thanks for watching.